new invention, the Bliss Tuner. I'm going to show you a brainwave power spectra of a serious Bliss experience, just so you, the, the reality of this reaches measurement for you. Here is a lady in Australia. She's leaning back and she's having an intense Bliss experience. This is my technology measuring the right and left hemisphere power spectrum, EEG brainwave. In green you have the alpha and in purple you have the beta. And what you're about to see is one, two, three, four, five harmonics in golden mean ratio in her EEG precisely as have, she's having this bliss experience. This is phenomenal. This is exceptional. And we have a whole body of literature on why it is so profound that the brainwave harmonic content during human bliss peak perception, whatever you want to call it. When we sell this to banks, we call it peak perception. But it's the, the, it's the physics of bliss, ecstasy, as it were, ecstasy. And the reason the brain waves make golden ratio during bliss experiences is so that you can make a phase conjugate longitudinal wave called the flame in the mind, which gives you psychokinesis. That's the short story, and I suggest you do some physics homework if you'd really like to understand that. But we know, for example, that when Ingo Swan uh, heated a thermistor with his mind at a distance, he did it through a metal cage, meaning it was not electromagnetic transverse. The physics is called longitudinal wave physics, improperly sometimes called scalar. And to make the longitudinal wave, not only the right and left hemisphere's golden ratio, but they're 180 degrees out of phase. And we have an audio software, the most powerful binaural beat on the planet that does it, called Secret Sound, goldenmean.info slash negentropic fields. Point being, that when you cannot make low frequencies in your EEG, you know what you cannot do. And this is the climax of this lecture. This is where this lecture is going. If you look on the cover of my book, you see that my new proof of the cause of gravity and life force and perception and all biologic and entropy and all, all self-organization. The cause of gravity, why objects fall to the ground, is Planck length of time times golden ratio exponents golden mean, which is the wavelength of hydrogen and the duration of the Earth year, Venus year, and the two frequencies of photosynthesis is the only two. Also, almost exactly the harmonics of the Schumann harmonic cascade, which is almost exactly the frequencies you just saw in the brain waves making bliss. And that is called a phase conjugate pump wave, which is the origin of all living neg entropy and self-organization. That's the physics. Bearden got it and we're doing it, and the prairie device works, and it does make rejuvenation, and it does heal. It's very cool, very fun. Point is that the Draco Anunnaki could not make those low frequencies in their brainwaves. Therefore, they didn't get the piezo embed braiding of the DNA to implode and get the kind of cyclokinesis we can make. So our iron blood has another value that Anki didn't even know about. Takadama, Adamic, the red man, the iron man. It enables a low frequency brain wave that embeds longer waves, which is to say bigger structures. Which means that when you stand barefoot on the earth, if you're, if you're not stupid enough to wear thick rubber soles on electrus mind, but you stand barefoot and get grounded, you access to ground is access to fractality, and therefore embedding, you get the psychokinetic leverage. And so you can get the long waves that braid your DNA and help you to implode and steer long waves, whereas the Draco could not. Now here's a story from both Sitchin and Anton Parks. It talks about Enki, we call him Ra, is an Abraham, the father of all religions. And Enki there in his genetics is Michael Tillich's work. But Enki is choosing which um, Cro-Magnon, which monkey blood to use for his genetic experiments. And he sees a certain family of monkeys, and he sees something that he's never seen before. You know what he saw? He saw those monkeys exhibiting compassion for other animals. He had never seen compassion before in his life. He had not witnessed the possibility of empathy. Why? Because the brainwave power spectrum of that Draco bloodline didn't have the capability. He chose the monkey that became us because he saw empathy. You know what the power of that is? To embed in another person's aura effectively enough to steer that tornado, and that physics come because of the low frequency content. Now I have just touched lightly on a whole bunch of subjects here that are extremely controversial. 
But I would like to point out that everything I'm saying here is a summary of what governments should love, which is the opposite of religion wars. We are saying religion wars and personality worship are poison and unnecessary once you understand the physics, the science, the electrical engineering. And that's really should be the end of religion wars on our planet. So I am, I am doing a, a, a politics of peacemaking here. I'm saying the physics of what it is to make peace is to make an electric field centripetal, which is precisely what fractality and phase conjugation is. So, that's the bulk of what I wanted to say today. And I am happy to entertain questions. That was just, wow. While they're formulating their questions in their head, I just wanted to tell you that um, I knew you were going to say it was the compassion and, and love, because that's what they're here to learn from us. Love. Hey. You, know, you know, what's really amazing is I met Bill Schneider and, and Al Bielik both. Oh, yeah. And, and I feel really strongly that I was part of the, some Montauk. But let's get to the people who paid to hear you talk <laughs> and, and see what questions they have to ask. Great. Yeah, Al was a good friend. She wants to hear a comment, a comment on RH negative blood. Sure. Um, well, we know that the highest percentage RH negative on the planet is UK. Um, and of course the cliche would be, you know, uh, stiff upper lip. The physiology is your upper lip gets stiff when your mother says don't cry, which means don't express emotion. Well, um, and the joke is we only love our dogs and our horses in the UK. But what, what really that means, RH negative, it means the rhesus monkey blood is absent which is the passion blood. So uh, the, the physiognomy uh, of the genetic is that the Draco reptilian blood, and they're not the same but they're related, um, was recessive and weaker than the monkey blood. So only inbreeding keeps RH negative present. Um, and, um, and Yeah, the blue blood. Yeah, And remember the the copper content, which is related to blue blood, also was less oxygen. But <clears throat> it, it, it is too much to say that to say that Rh negative means reptilian, but it does mean that recessive side of the blood could still be dominant. And it's true. The passion kind of the blood, the southern, the monkey blood, uh, had the passion. Well, but we have to acknowledge here that the Draco uh, reptilian blood gave us powerful Kundalini, and it was some of the most uh, uh, strongest uh, genetic in the solar system. But so by having, you know, Draco on the one side of the family, which is called Uru, and the bird side of the family, the blue avian, they call it the EB, the, the crossing over is what makes us fun. And, you know, if you ask a rabbi what Hebrew EB Uru means, he will tell you it means crossing over. Wow, that, that's great. The website that explain the website that explains all of this is that uh, goldenmean.info slash the rest of the story. Goldenmean goldenmean.info the rest of the story. Yeah, it's slash slash the rest of the story. Slash forward slash, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has he has several books that's on his website on that website. And, and so the, 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 the paper is called, it's called Chemistry of Origin of Chemistry of Alien Blood, and it's there at uh, fractalfield.com slash nagentropic fields, which is where the audio software is. But that's all linked from that first website. And remember that I've been teaching a version of the ET origins of DNA for 20 or 30 years, and so there's many pieces of the story there, but I was focused today on the blood chemistry. Yeah, it, everything was right on. I agree with you. everything. It, it, it's like you say, you're going way out there just for alone for people to even you know believe in reptilians and dracos and and it's, it's no doubt about it. You know, you can't argue with the DNA when you look at it. You know that it was it was altered and well. And if you look if you look at a fetus, the first phase of the fetus looks like a tadpole, a small frog. Thank you. It was a frog. It's like an iguana. Too. Yeah, that's right. It's the difference between a guana and a human at four weeks. Yeah. 
And also, you look at the second and third chromosomes, and that's where we have those two extra simian uh, genes. Mm. Uh, that, that's where they fuse them, on that second and third chromosome. Mm. So that's the mitochondrial DNA that you can't argue with. Once you look at that science and, 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 and then the blood, how, how can you not say? And it's so funny, you, you, know, you have the sayings and, and that's what, but I like to make, put things in simple terms. They're here to learn from us love and compassion. And, and it, a lot of this has to do with the politics of radioactivity in that you, you can see that from their perspective they need a desert, high radioactive, low oxygen environment. But from our perspective, once we understand how to contain radio, radioactivity, we understand what, what our history can do to solve their problem. And in fact, when we see these gold powder monoatomic plasmas reducing radioactivity measurably, as did the Ark of the Covenant, as did focused human attention reduces radioactivity, it's actually creating centripetal forces in general that, which are negentropic, that be, become our contribution to evolution. Yes, one last question. Why would the planet instead of going somewhere else? Well, the this, this story, the ancient story of this planet is that it was consciously chosen to be a genetic library. And, but you don't get a library card unless you know what DNA is for. And if you don't know why stars make DNA, then you don't deserve a library card. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the stars work to make DNA because we make something they require. We know that 11 different times it was measured a dramatic decrease in solar flares when a million children sang the same song. And the physics of that is that we make a centripetal force required for the evolution of stars, and that's called the secret of the dark stars. So DNA has a destiny in the stars, but it requires us understanding what, where our auras go at death, which ultimately, if we're going to grow up, has to be through the sun. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, I agree with you. It's all the series for burned out and so heavy. Everything is pulling towards there in the sensor. But this is the heaviest part. And then the Dogon tribe knew it was called Po, and, and it was a heavy star, and it was verified when we had the Hubble telescope that had this advanced knowledge that was passed on to them, that they did this dance every 50 years that talks about exactly what we knew. Thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you on Skype and Facebook and everything. Bless and share some more secrets. I work at Radiologic Health Branch, huh. and for the Rep. Draco, <laughs> and, uh, and, they, and they just practically shit in their pants when I uh, <laughs> talk to them like you do. <laughs> so, anyway, so I'm going back to the snake bit after we're done here. Pleasant. Nice talk. I'll talk to you later. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.